In response to Wizards of the Coast's morbid efforts to erode the stability of all fantasy role-playing games everywhere, there is a successfully funded Kickstarter for Tales of the Valiant, which is the new name, or the proper name, for Black Flag. Inspired by the D&D System Reference Document, or the SRD, Tales of the Valiant is a project by Cobalt Press that improves upon and maintains compatibility with 5th edition. It offers greater licensing flexibility than 5e and places the care of a core fantasy system with a company that has notably not worked to undermine the RPG community. You might think that Ru Wizards of the Coast has repented for its attempts to steal D&D from its community, but their latest announcement that they were raising the price of their, their books feels an awful lot like an attempt to discourage players from investing investing in hard copies of books for a game that the company is trying to move to a digital-only model. Wizards of the Coast's business model is to lie to its customers, and sadly it seems that that's been the case since 4th edition, a few brief relapses into honesty notwithstanding. There's little hope for WotC, but there's a great hope for open D&D. Tales of the Valiant is funded, and it's looking great. A role-playing game's character sheet says a lot about the game. Not everything a character sheet suggests about a game is necessarily definitive, but it's always fun, I think, to look at a character sheet and think about why it looks the way it does. For instance, the character sheet for Call of Cthulhu looks a little complex with lots of fields for numbers and calculations. Most significantly, most fields are split into three parts, which indicates that most attributes of a character have three facets to them. In this case, it's the full value for a normal test, half value for a hard test, and one-fifth value for an, uh, an impossible test. I published some rules for simple starship combat in Starfinder, link in the description below if you're interested, and it uses a ship character sheet that's just half a page. It's not exactly rocket science. I mean, it's, it's rocket combat, but it's not rocket science. It's a simple character sheet, and that reflects how simple the system is, intentionally. Not much to think about, not much to track. It's designed to be fast and easy, and you can tell. So here's the official character sheet for Tales of the Valiant. Let's analyze it. The first thing I notice is the header and the footer. The top and the bottom of the character sheet have relatively huge spaces for the player and character names, and there's a big Tales of the Valiant word mark at the bottom. This says that the designer is not exactly hurting for space, which is a good sign. That's space you, as a player, you don't have to worry about filling in numbers or, or figuring things out for that space. That's dead space, meaning it's stuff you don't have to think about. That suggests that the system is relatively simple. I mean, there's a lot of values on the character sheet, but it's not packed in there with no breathing room. Attributes and saves. The six main attributes that form the core mechanic of Open D&D are prominently laid out across the top of the character sheet. Along with these numbers are the derivative saving throw values, which just makes sense. It's a great place for those. The skills they're the same old skills as 5th edition. Nothing new here. Special attributes. The special attributes uh, feature things like the proficiency bonus, the initi initiative bonus, speed, luck, passive insight, and investigation and perception scores. They're all in the middle of the character sheet in little boxes. This helps visually differentiate them from your core attributes, which are in circles, uh, and they do betray a little crunch in the game. When I'm a game master, I dislike having to remember or reference player attributes at all. I don't want to ever have to look at a player's character sheet or remember what their score is, and passive scores you are expected to remember those as the Game Master, and I, I don't care to do that. HP, Death, and Exhaustion. Health scores are together in one place, off to the side. It's very convenient. In the 5e character sheet, this space was, and a lot more, uh, was relegated to bonds, ideals, and flaws, which nobody ever really used, so I'm not sad to see those go. Weapons and gear. The rest of the character sheet accurately reflects what a game of open D&D is actually about. Looting and fighting. List your gear and special talents and loot here. There's no math required, it's just copying stuff down from the book when you build your character and then adding to it as you play. This to me is a vast improvement over the 5e character sheet. It features what's actually important to the game, but also remains uncluttered. There's still a lot to this character sheet, which I think is fair. Open D&D 5e has never been as light on 
rules as its character sheet pretends it is, so I think Tales of the Valiant is a little more realistic in that sense. The real improvement though, to be blunt, is the removal of the ideals, flaws, and bonds, and, and that fourth one that I can never remember. I like the idea of those a lot, but I just don't feel like the Wizards of the Coast team ever really leaned into it as much as I think they needed to in order to make it a thing. I, I mean, it's hard. I, I, I always tried to make it a thing in my games, but every time I would bring up someone's bond or ideal, I'd have to remind them that they even existed. And, and besides, it doesn't seem fair to hold a player to an ideal or bond that they invented during character creation before they really knew their character. I, I don't think it's a broken system, I just think it's a system that never quite worked, or at least not universally. I wouldn't mind seeing someone take another stab at it at some point, but I don't know that it has to be on the front of the character sheet. All in all, I think the Tales of the Valiant character sheet accurately suggests a game with an easy character build process. It takes about 12 to 15 minutes to build one. I've got a video on that. A game that has plenty of room for character growth, and one with relatively few calculated values. As I've said, I think that keeping and even expanding passive attributes is a disservice to the game master, but for compatibility, I guess, it, it needs to be there, because books and adventures call for passive checks. Other than that complaint, though, I, I really f like what I see. I was already excited to play Tales of the Valiant, and seeing the character sheet is another reassurance that this isn't just 5e. This is 5e from a company that puts thought and care into its products and places the interests of its community first.